In a fair story, the Aflao Sector Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority has intercepted a truck loaded with 600 bags of government-subsidized fertilizer allegedly been smuggled to neighboring Togo. The truck was spotted in the Akachinov district of the Volta region, attempting to use an unapproved route through Ava at to enter Togo. The second in command of the Aflao Sector, Dr. Prince Sodoke Amuzu, explained they acted swiftly on a tip-off from the Akachinov District Chief Executive to apprehend the suspect. The document he gave us covering the, the waybill. And that waybill is reading uh, yesterday's date. Whilst he says he took off from someone the previous day, which was first. But the receipt or the waybill is covering uh, yesterday. That means we, are, we have conflicting information that our arrest just what I am telling you is what we cannot pick somebody for something. Okay, that's fine. So what's the way forward now? Uh, I mean he was on the wrong route and he has been arrested. Therefore well, the suspect, John Paul, who claimed ownership of the bags of fertilizers, denied the items were being smuggled out of the country to be sold on the Togolese markets. To the where, one warehouse that is I won't before taking it to my end. So as we are speaking now, I didn't inform the assembly that is the DC that it's coming to me. But I have uh, told uh, the NAPCO officials who is in charge of the fertilizer, uh, subsidy fertilizer in my area. Mm. But are you aware that the TCT executive that is the municipal assembly or the district assembly. We spoke assembly about that. We, aware. Spoke, we spoke Before about it yesterday. We in. spoke about it yesterday. You spoke about it with who? I spoke about it with the DC, mm. which I uh, told him that this is what we, this is the way we also go about it. Go about, we are not getting you. Which way? The so way, like, what this way? Yourself. I didn't bought it myself. It has to be with me. When the subsidy program starts, then. We, 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 we go, we, we, okay. we start okay. selling. So one by one, who authorizes you to come to you? It's you are not a district chief executive, you are not an assembly it's member, it's and this has not authorized to come to you. Who authorizes you to come to you? PH, uh, uh, PH Investment. Who is PH they, are, investment? They, are, they are my business partners, which they promised me giving me... They are government this. officials? No, they are, uh, they, they are sole proprietors. Of uh, planting for food and jobs fertilizers? Yes, they have the certificate of supplying it. They have the certificate for supplying it. Yes. Really, they work with the Ministry of Agri. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. Unless you confront the man himself, that he can explain more better. I can't speak for him. But you are keeping this thing out of custody, and and you have the audacity to say point blank that you are not smuggling this, and yet you don't know what really this thing is uh, for. I know. I know about it. As I'm telling you, the way we go about it when telling when selling it to the customers. The way. Can you show us the way? That's what I'm telling you. That we submit, we be, uh, we submit, okay. uh, we were being given. Okay, you've said that. We are to give uh, mm. this thing, uh, the record. Very well, you've said that. Yes. How much do you sell one bag? As at last year, it was per uh, urea, per 25 kg. What is urea? Urea, this is the urea. Okay. 50 kg is sell for 20, uh, 75 cities. Mm. As at last year, but we had an uh, order from the uh, NAPCO officials, with the um, with the agri officials that this very year the planting for food initiative, the price has been increased to 80 Ghana cities, which mm. we are aware. So okay. we are keeping it. When the initiative starts, then we start because my man told me that the warehouse which the goose is at its end. Now the goods have to be conveyed. Uh, the goods have to be converted to my location so that he can order for another goods mm. in the next coming month. Is it supposed okay. to be sold? Supposed to be sold? How? Is it supposed to be sold to farmers? Yes. 
supposed to be sold. Yeah, it's what's the actual price, you know. The current price, as I'm telling you now, is supposed to be 80 CDs. Mm, okay. And we are well. Okay. Number, how, how many, how many, what is the total, uh, total number of the goods that you are carrying? Total number of the petrol? The total, the, the very one here is um, 60, uh, 600. 600. 600. But the previous one that we have loaded is 700. Mm. Yes. Okay. So and what is the previous one too? Very well. Go ahead. Where? Is the previous one that you sent? It's in my warehouse. Warehouse. Okay. At yes, where? At Abed 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 where we are again sending this very one to. Okay. All right. Can Your you full name? One official who is behind this. Who official? Yeah, official who authorized you? There is you? no official that I may say precisely. So the NAPCO it's, person you are dealing with, what is his name? No, there are many. There are many. There are Ma mention two. Just two. Just two. Two, two is not so many. In this very case, I can't mention. No, listen, no, 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 hold on. Wait, Chief, relax. You know, you know, Wait, you know this is very issue. Okay. We were, we were are you hiding something? I'm not hiding anything. So what, what are the That's names? the reason why I have, to, I have to bring the person that gave me the goods. So mention the names of the people who are behind you. There is no people. The very person that gave me the goods is Philip. That is... Uh, what, what is PH investment. Mm. The boss that issued me the goods with the way bear, mm. directing it to my location, which we are on course. Okay. okay. Your well, full name. Uh, Your full name. Uh, my the goods is coming to me. It's coming I'm, to a, me. I'm an input dealer. Mm. I sell. You have documents to show? I have the document. The document is uh, it's with the officials. Okay. They seize it. It's with them. So I have documents for selling this. Okay. So, so uh, we, were, we were not smuggling it. We were not smuggling it. It's okay. not small goods. We are not crossing over the country. No, 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 no. Oh. They that met us, they can testify if only they, they can speak the gospel facts. They can tell you that it's on the road to uh, a, a next town to have a fiade nyigba. The next to have a mm. Then we get to our warehouse. So we're not smuggling the goods. So they don't know how the goods, uh, how the issue got far as the extent that they were involved in media. So we're not uh, smuggling. Who, the who are you sending mm. the goods to? The goods is coming to my warehouse. Your warehouse. The mm. drivers, the drivers were, were coming when they asked me to come over to pick them because they don't know the road. I went and picked them. We were on the road to the warehouse when the custom officials came over. So it, it, it's your, I'm coming, it, it's your warehouse attached to government institution? It's, it's, uh, it's uh, individual, this is how I Individual, but this is called a government, it's a government product. Why is it coming government, to you? Government, government is not supposed to sell this. The, uh, the initiative is between the, uh, this thing, the, the, the input delays and then the government. So we will present the, the sales which attached with um, uh, daily record sheets. Okay. Then we submit to the, uh, we submit it to um, uh, how do you call uh, NAPCO officials or the agri personnel. Okay. So until the goods is being sold, we cannot submit the daily record. Mm. So are you sending it to the district assembly in the name of the district assembly? Is it in the name of the district assembly where you are sending it to? No, because. The goose is coming to the warehouse. Whenever we take the goose to warehouse, when when, when we, we are to take Up it to the assembly, it has to be back with the uh, uh, invoice, which is the company invoice. Okay. Right. But because the goose is first of all, mm. went to a, a, a warehouse before coming to me. Mm. The, it's only the warehouse, uh, how do you call it? the warehouse way bill that mm. was issued attached to this. Mm. Well, time for a clean Ghana campaign now. And a middle-aged fisherman has been forced to clean sections of choked Mamprovi drains after he was caught openly defecating in broad daylight. Robert Cote was found attending nature's call in a gutter by the Coligono Choco Road earlier. Uh, the environmental health team, which caught him in action, asked Kote to immediately choose between court action or cleaning the entire section of the drain for a week. Robert chose the latter. Here are excerpts from uh, this week's edition of Joy Clean Ghana Inspection. We will take him to where and where 
Then we will get a room for him when we are coming. We will come and leave him here with somebody. He will clean the whole of this place. He will clean the whole of this place. He was caught practicing open defecation inside this drain. So we have just arrested him. What we are going to do is, we will let this man clean the whole of the drain. The whole drain. That is what we are going to be doing now. So he's going to clean the whole drain from the other side, from this side to the end. And that is the punishment we will give him. It is better than taking him to court or doing anything. What so the never. No, you are, you are inside. Baby, I was in the toilet in the hall. Baby, I I will get them. In the way, who public toilet be our around? Hi, baby, I say a hand of a toilet. Eh? In the task force, bed now in China, who pray we are more to office. What you say? In the Yabama, why you're Juma has out for one week? On an hour, who say I do call court, I am near me and only a hand out of a year near my me and no funny. It has to make a call to Lua also, no two to one. I told you, much more to go. I will be a white year for the last year. One week, I'm a fake free. One week, I'm a washing. Oh, no, she said, Oh, tell me, no, no, cause no, I call there. Tell no, which one do you want to do? Soon, you get a car. Nia <laughs> Before we can, we want this train to be clean, clean as possible. Okay. Ah, obesh is shy. Eh, shy. We know the obesh is sending in a gum. See no. See now start here, Jumano. So today, we want to, you, you are going to be an ambassador for this drain. Eh? Ambassador for this drain, this gutter. Eh? And so that every morning, we'll leave our contact number for you. If you see people parade here and they are defecating, just call us. We'll come and they'll continue cleaning this drain now until the drain is clean to the end of the sea. Okay? So we are going to give you a position here. The name of this drain is going to be your name, ambassador for defecating in the drain. And AMA have made you to clean the drain. And the drain is now very clean. I hope you are OK. Got an air, get up, or no. I got Ben, but I got an air, no. Why she will contact no man? I guess she got an air, Bono Bakway, need that name, not very clean, a cat over Namogoni, and I mean, or more than no trial, what about more than what they are. You have to be on a got an air, or bed, didn't I go out of the cote? Yeah. Kote, kote gota. White house. Kote gota. Yeah. Oh no. the kote drain. Make sure you're not caught, but don't do the wrong thing. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. 
Now on to news just coming in from our court correspondent, Joseph Akable. Former GFA president, Kwesin Yantichi, has been slapped with three charges, including fraud. A former member of the GFA's executive committee, Abdullahi Al-Hassan, also faces two charges, namely conspiracy to commit fraud and fraud. Principal State Attorney Victoria Siedria on Wednesday uh, told an Accra High Court that the two individuals executed a memorandum of understanding on behalf of a non-existent company claiming to be attracting sponsorship for the Ghana Premier League. Uh, joining us on the phone is my colleague, Joseph Akable, who was in court. He gives us more details. Joseph, good morning. What more can you tell us? Uh, conspiracy fraud, uh, the second being fraud, with the third being uh, corruption by a public officer. Another person who has also been charged in this particular matter is Abdullah Al Hassan. Uh, he is described by state prosecutors as a former executive committee member of the Ghana Football Association. And for those who may have watched uh, that particular documentary, which is the subject of this particular uh, pro prosecution that is taking place, uh, he was described in the documentary as the right hand man of uh, the former football administrator. Uh, the two individuals pleaded not guilty to all the charges that were leveled against them. Uh, the second accused person, he had two charges against him, that of conspiracy to commit fraud and that of fraud. And he also pleaded not guilty to those charges. After the plea had been taken, their lawyers made an application for bail. They assured the court that these are individuals that have been subjects of investigation since the year 2018, June specifically, where the documentary was put out, yet they had so far cooperated with the court. And so uh, they wanted them to be granted bail uh, with the understanding that they will cooperate with the court and show up anytime they are needed. Uh, the state prosecutors did not oppose the request for bail, except to say that uh, they expect that the court fixes a bail that is commensurate to the sums involved in this particular matter, because we are told that he is said to have demanded about $12 million, according to the facts of the case, from the these investors and the 12 million dollars is supposed to distribute it amongst uh, the president, the vice president, as well as the roads and highway minister and his deputy, with the remaining going to Mr. Nyantechi and uh, his colleague, who has also been charged as well. And so the court fixed bill for one million cities uh, with three sureties, one to be justified. They are also required to turn up at the CID headquarters to report once uh, a week, that is every Friday. Uh, that is till the, this particular matter starts until the end of this particular case. And so uh, this is what transpired a short while ago at the criminal division of the Accra High Court as Mr. Nyantichi was formally charged and has been granted bail. For joining us, my name is Joseph Akable. And And details there being shared by our court correspondent, Joseph Akable. The news just in is that former GFA president, Kwesi Nyanteji, has been slapped with three charges, including fraud. A former member of the GFA's executive committee, Abdullah Al Hassan, also faces two charges, uh, which is conspiracy to commit fraud and fraud. But the background, obviously, is uh, that the former football administrator was in 2018 busted in the documentary using the name of the president to peddle influence uh, since the documentary done by tiger ipi was broadcast back in june 2018 government has been under pressure to take action against the main target of the investigations kwesi nyantechi the G uh, ag's office in the document filed in court uh, listed the charges against him as conspiracy to commit fraud fraud and corruption by public officer our clients have pleaded not guilty to those charges, so the basis is that it is our view that these are not charges that can be proven by the state. Mm. Your, your colleague was making a point in the courtroom relating to uh, the fact that what is said to have happened amounted to inducement and he did not uh, demand any money from anyone. What exactly was he seeking to drive at? So basically, it's like you are on your own and somebody suddenly appears and say that I want you to help me do A, B, C, D, this is your reward. Subsequently, you turn around and say that you have committed an offense. And such things I don't think that are permissible under the law. And that you cannot induce somebody to commit an offense and turn around and say the fellow is guilty of that offense. So basically that's what he sought to do in the application for bail. Satisfied with the bail conditions that have been fixed? B basically, yes, they are going to meet the bail conditions, except that we think that the kind of offense and the kind of amount they say they are involved, you ought not to grant, give such a, a bail, lengthy bail uh, term, um, let me put it this way, condition, but I believe that 
It's the court. The court has a discretion to exercise. So they've exercised the discretion. Our duty is to make sure that our clients meet the bail condition for now. So what's your name, please? Charles Posey. All right, so you heard the question, Jante, she's lawyer and that interaction with Joseph Ackerblade. Now, I miss serving my party and my country. That's according to former General Secretary of the NPP, Kwame Neje Ejapong, who was suspended in the lead-up to the 2016 elections for allegedly sabotaging the then NPP candidate, Nane Kofuado. Speaking on PM Express, Kwame Ejapong told Evans Mensah that he's hoping to come back fully into politics, but is traumatized that the two major political parties have allowed political discourse to degenerate. I miss serving my party, I miss serving my country. I mean, that, that's for a fact, and I, because I think I can, I can make a contribution. I see a lot of things happen that I think can be improved and should be improved. Um, this country is a lovely country. I've traveled far and wide, uh, my, the work I do and the things that has taken me around the world. And Ghana is one of the most livable places you can ever be. And so when I see the degeneration of politics, what I worry now, and I said it when I was general secretary. If you remember the statement I read when the NDC were having their um, congress, congress in Kumasi. Uh, and I said it. That must have been 2015? 2014. 14. And I said to look, these are the two major parties in the country. And for the next few years, maybe, it's likely we may be changing places. The way we treat ourselves, the way we respect ourselves is very important. I'm traumatized as how we have allowed political discourse to degenerate. We think that when you sit on television and radio and insult and be very venomous and disrespectful, that makes you a politician. So you were hoping to come back into full-time politics? Of course. I'm too young to leave it. Well, Kabine Japong, meanwhile, says his relationship with President Akufuado is still intact despite the controversies that characterize his suspension. Always had a good relationship with him. Um, he's been like a senior brother to me for many years. I still see him um, since he's been president. I went to him personally to go and congratulate him at home. I've visited him a number of occasions. Even and this year, he, you know, I mean, he calls once in a while. He does. Oh yes, yeah. I don't believe it. Mean, you don't. Uh. <laughs> Because I, I, mean, I called him. I lived I through him. the time that you were going through the challenges. I don't think that was said about you, that you were conspiring against him. You wanted Agenda 2020. Well, I, I think we all know, you know, I don't want to get into that. Sometimes I don't want to dignify these things because yeah. everybody knows what I've done for this party and where my. But you don't think you have to address it because, you see. Well, the right time will come for yes. us to address but it. But that's what I'm saying. I'm but, surprised. I'm but, surprised that he calls you. But, but I call him too. I go to him. I, oh, you do so, do? Yes, 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 yes. You're so pals. Yes. I mean, there's. He, we so should, why do you think there's this public image that the, the two of you are on terrible terms? No, no, no. no. And if I want to see the president, I call him sometimes at night and I'll drive to him. And then uh, we'll have a little chat, you know. Um, we, we've, we've been friends for many years. We were friends yeah. before politics, mind you. Efia Kobisewa Ampem Girl Senior High School will carry the mantle for female schools in the Ashanti region to the National Science and Mass Quiz, as the likes of Yasantua and St. Louis falter at the regional level. They beat Kumasi Wesley Girls Senior High School in an all-female duel to book a place after Yasantua Girls Senior High School and St. Louis fell on the first and second days, respectively, in an ongoing Ashanti regional qualifiers. Other schools which qualified on day two of the regional competition are St. Hubert Seminary and KNUSD Senior High School. Major, calculate the mass of the decahydrate, decahydrate of Na2CO3 required to prepare 400 centimeters cube of 0 0.250 mole per dmq solution of CO3 2 minus ions. Na2CO3 alone is 106. 10.6 grams. What? 10.6 grams. 3.6. It's a bonus for contention. 
The first contest of the day involving Kolongo Duma CSHS, Sims SHS, Kunadu Yadon SHS, and Masvan SHS was close. Sims tied with Kolongo Duma in the third round, but in the final round, Sims was too fit to outpace. Are you coming? Six yes. four nine. What? Six four nine. Eight. Six four nine. Six or eight? Six. Either way is a bonus anyway. I feel Kobe and Pim girls as they just knew exactly how to beat their peers of Kumasi Wesley girls. The choir the Wesley rhythm. SHS and the crew form SHTS were also no match in the second contest. 39, 39. Calculate the percentage oxygen by mass Aguna, in the calcium trioxocarbonate 4 compound. Calcium is 40, oxygen is 16, and carbon is still 12. You talk to me. We have 48%. It's as simple as that. Ken West SHS seem to have learned from their mentors by amassing the highest score of 53 on the day. Beating Aguna SHTS, Amenyampo SHS, and Konfanochi SHS. Come again. Zero minus seven. Seven zero minus two zero. I'll give you one out of three. For the final contest of the day saw St. Hubert amass 31 points in the we second round to leave St. Louis SHS with an inverse figure. They led Asantvan SHS yourself. by two points as at the There's end of the third round, the but took hold so of the fourth points. round of riddles to win with 52 points. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Well, the likes of Kumasi High School, or say to two senior high school, and in Sutaman Senior High School, all won their respective contests to make it to the national championship. Here's day three results of the contests. And that's how the contest ended on day three. Stay with us. You're still watching the Joy News Desk. We've got business. Emmanuel Abwaje Uafe brings you details in business right after this. Stay with us. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to business. Government has committed to protecting local businesses by implementing recommendations from a report by the Ghana International Trade Commission over unfair trade practices by some foreign firms. According to Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry, Carlos Ahinkra, this has become necessary because of attempts by the Chinese embassy in Ghana to dispute claims by some local manufacturers of unfair trade practices by some importers from China. Speaking with Joy Business, Mr. Ahinkra said the work of the Ghana International Trade Commission will be a major policy directive for government in a quest to support local manufacturers. Alouex is trying to support with evidence uh, the dumping effect of uh, aluminium from China onto our um, uh, you know, markets, which is making them very uncompetitive. 
Uh, I hear, I wasn't there, but I hear it was quite impressive. Uh, later on, I also had a, a call by, from the Chinese embassy uh, and trying to explain why the presentation uh, was not uh, appropriate because uh, the materials that they provided to support the evidence was inadequate and the information, some of the information was also not uh, uh, true, well, I mean, according to them. So but, I said, but I said, no, I mean, that is not for you to say. Um, if you have any, idea, that's why they invited them to come. So if they have anything to complain about, they should put it on paper. We'll attach it to the report that they bring to us as a ministry. My minister will take a decision, and we'll see if we have to go forward. All this has got to do with the WTO. If we decide to go to the World Trade Organization with this information, then we have to go on a solid, hard rock uh, uh, foundation to ensure that we don't get thrown away. But that notwithstanding, I would say that the GITC has done very well. Within a very short span of time, they have managed to prove themselves so well. Now, as the deadly coronavirus continues to claim many lives globally, the Ghana Telecoms Chamber says it has responded to the call by the Ghana Health Service for use of its platforms to help prevent the spread in Ghana. According to CEO of the Chamber, Ken Ashibe, the action plan, which will be under the auspices of the Ministry of Communications, will be implemented in two phases after it is finalized next week. Ken Ashibe spoke with Joy Business during a book launch by MTN Ghana. We'll also be able to, working together with the Ministry of Health and other partners, come up with a disaster preparedness and response plan such that if the, what we are praying against should not even happen, should happen, what are the things that we're going to do? And these are the, uh, um, the partnerships that telecommunication can do uh, with you know, industry, with the state, with other uh, partners to be able to help Ghanaians live a better life. Mm. So one may ask, what exactly are the telecoms doing? Because when it comes to the coronavirus, mm. I mean, it has to do with health. So telecoms coming together with the Ministry of Communications, and that, what exactly, what role are you going to be playing? So definitely now we have two phases at this particular stage, which we hope that would continue, where there will be no reported confirmed case in Ghana. What we definitely would want to do is <clears throat> the Ministry of Health has already reached out for some uh, short code. We would explore the possibilities of being able to offer some toll-free numbers to that, you know, citizens would be able to reach out to duty bearers for. We would also want to be able to use our networks to be able to send out the right information so that the right information will be given to Ghanaians, will be able to dispel a lot of the rumors, you know, be able to ensure that people know what actually they need to do. And then definitely we are also reaching out to uh, other, uh, the telecoms players within other markets that even have the situation. So that we'll be able to learn from what happens there. We're reaching out to people like GSMA and all of that to be able to take some learning out of that. The second phase, if that should happen, we also need to prepare for that. We also need to then look at how we can use the telecommunication industry, even the data that we have, anonymized data, to be able to pre uh, predict movements that happen, be able to deploy apps that would help people know what to do when these things happen, and also the possibility of these apps even running without, even if you don't have data. So there are other things, but a lot of this we'll be able to develop well when we meet uh, the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service, then we can develop the strategy. How soon are we expecting this? Very soon. We're meeting sometime on Monday. That's business for now. There'll be more business at midday. My name is Imano Abuaji. Have a good morning.